All right, we got a new Democratic Detonation War Bond for Helldivers 2. It's been out for two days, so let's talk about it. Now, as always, I don't like to do clickbait. I don't like any of that. So if you're not looking to watch the whole thing, the whole review is it kind of sucks. It's dog water. It's mid, as they say. There's a couple guns here. You can see there's the Adjudicator. It looks really cool. It has a cool name. Absolutely worthless, not even worth buying. We have the crossbow, which is meh. And then the Eruptor, which is the best part of this entire war bond, but not enough to really justify it when you could just use the Scorcher that's better. So that's the whole review, but let's actually go in depth if you care to watch a video and learn a little bit more about each gun. Now there's also thermite grenades and armor and other stuff in here as well. And I'm going to briefly touch on it, but like the armor is nothing special. It's nothing new. It's just a different design. So like if you like the design, get it. If not, whatever. Onto the guns. As you can see, the Adjudicator has uh, the semi and the full auto. It's got a little bit of a scope, but honestly, it's just as bad as every other designated marksman rifle in the game. The full auto is practically worthless. Even if it's not in full auto, this thing is hard to aim, does almost no damage. And that that that's the whole point of a designated marksman rifle or like a counter sniper rifle or anything of that sort of thing, right? Like the whole point is that it does high damage has a good range and is accurate, and it can't do any of those. It fails on every single front. Like I would rather have just like the basic rifle that you start with as a level one cadet instead of this thing. There's just no situation where you would ever want to have this gun active. And I understand that not every gun needs to be the most powerful. Not every gun can be the most powerful, but there should be like situation or niche picks or some place where it will do well or where it excels and it just it has nothing there is no situation in which this gun excels over any other gun and that's a problem now again that's a problem as a whole for designated marksman rifles and they have talked about this they have a poll going on about this it does look like they are going to rework them so this review might change when they do that rework but as of now it is it is worthless it's not even worth buying D don't even bother Onto the exploding crossbow. This one was the one that I was the most hyped for. I love crossbows. I love exploding crossbows. The, the concept seems cool. And it seems like a lot of people talked about the stealth capability. Having a gun that is silent maybe gives us a whole different way to play the game. Excuse this little part right here, but we had some level one cadets with me. So I gave them a whole bunch of different fun toys to play with because why not? And like we were just talking about with the Adjudicator, it's okay for a gun to not be the strongest gun available, right? If it has a niche, if it has something that it can fill in, if it has something that it excels at, that's how the gun should be. There's no one gun that should be the best at everything. Rather, the gun should have its own niches to fill in. So I thought the Exploding Crossbow would do well for like a stealth run. However, that has not been my experience. Uh, I've tried it in stealth runs and the enemy is able to instantly pinpoint where you are. Now, granted, I only tested this on automatons, so maybe different with bugs, but it does not do that stealth niche very well. It is also the only gun with bullet drop, which you have to account for. And it's not that bad. You'll see a little bit later I'm shooting it. The bullet drop is not terrible at all, but it is still something to factor in that makes the skill cap on this gun a little bit higher and that's where it fails. It's a little bit higher of a skill cap, and it does have a niche use that maybe sort of doesn't work, but outside of that, it, it doesn't really do anything well. Like, well, you'll see, you can shoot the ground and knock bots down, and that's great, but like every gun to a degree takes down the bots. This has a five shot, I believe, cartridge, so it reloads a lot. The reload is kind of fast, but you risk blowing yourself up. So it has a lot of downsides to it. And those downsides just don't counteract that it doesn't do other things well enough. Like when it comes to hulks or vents or anything like that, I would much rather have a scorcher blowing it up in one cartridge. Whereas this, I've yet to be able to destroy any of those things with it because it just doesn't shoot fast enough and doesn't hold enough ammo to actually take down a vent on a heavy enemy. And when you're fighting things like the shield guys, like, yes, you can pinpoint across the shield and hit them, but it still takes just as many shots as, say, the Scorcher. So again, why why not just take the Scorcher? This holds a little bit more ammo than the Scorcher, I guess, but, like, ammo is not a problem in this game. For most people, you find ammo everywhere, right? So that's not really a downside. It's a blast to use, but it's just, there's no point. There's no point in bringing it. 
Which brings us to our last gun, the Eruptor, which there is a point to bringing this gun. This gun can take out different things like bug holes. It can blow up automaton factories, which is awesome. It does have a scope, but most people say you should learn to use the gun without the scope, just using the crosshair, and I agree, it rocks with that. It has a huge explosion radius. You can take out 5, 10, I've even seen clips of 15, 20 enemies with one shot. This thing does what it's intended to do, and it does it well. But it does have two huge drawbacks that make me think it's really not worth recommending. Those drawbacks are one, as you see here, in between every shot, it's a bolt action. So you gotta pop out the round and grab another one, which causes these huge gaps in between being able to shoot, as well as it has a small magazine of, I think, five, maybe six shots. Which again brings me back to why bother taking this when you can just bring the Scorcher. Like, yes, you can decimate enemies with it, but so can the Scorcher. And like, yes, it can blow things up, but so can the Scorcher. But that, that downtime just makes it so if you're getting swarmed by enemies, you don't stand a chance. And when it comes to like vents, you'll get one shot off against the vent and then the enemy will turn around before you get the second shot off because it just takes so long to get the second shot off. The reload's a little long, a little clunky. And as you can see, this gun is great for hurting yourself if enemies are anywhere near you. It's satisfying to blow up bug holes and automaton factories with your primary. I do love that about the gun. I do love how spread it is. See, I got just six kills, 10 kills right there. Like it blows enemies up and that's awesome. I just don't know that I can recommend it over other guns. And that's, again, the problem is that every every weapon in here is just why, why bother? Like there are just better weapons to take. But if you're gonna get this pass, you have to get this gun. This is the gun that makes this pass worth it. Side note, the, the grenade pistol also makes it worth it. If you're like me and you go on bug missions without a lot of explosives, you usually don't have a way to close bug holes. Having a pistol be the bug hole closer, bringing up other stratagems and other things is great in niche scenarios. And that just happens to be my niche scenario. So I did get this for the grenade pistol alone, but I am happy with the Eruptor to a degree. Now let's talk the Thermite Grenade for just a second here because I got a clip of it, so I might as well show it off. Uh, the Thermite Grenade, so you throw it, it sticks to something sometimes. It, that seems hit or miss if it actually sticks. And it's supposed to like burn and then it explodes and it's supposed to take down heavy armor units. So it doesn't do flame damage as well as incendiary grenades, but it's meant for taking down big guys. So like, let's throw it on the Hulk here. And you see, I actually got the sticky right here. So I managed to stick it right bullseye, right on the eye. You can see the fire damage going. And in a few seconds, you'll see it go boom. And he's still standing. So we throw a second grenade and we let it do its thing. And you'll see uh, that doesn't kill him either. And I end up using a couple more grenades and it doesn't take them down either because they don't stick. So the inconsistency on the sticky alone makes it not worth it. But if two grenades aren't enough to blow up the Hulk bruiser, like this thing isn't succeeding at what it's meant to do, which is burn through the armor and take down heavily armored units, right? It just, it doesn't do any of that well. So there's just no point in bringing this grenade. You'd better off bringing either impact grenades for those, oh man, I need something right now moments or even better, the stun grenades, which are just overpowered in every way, shape, and form, right? there, There's no good reason, there's no situation where the stun grenade is not the superior choice to bring. So the thermite grenade is cool in concept, but it just fails on all fronts, so don't bother. And really that sums up the whole pass, is why bother? The guns are med, the grenade is awful, that does have some armor that has some cool looks, but doesn't do anything any other armor doesn't do. So there's also the extract of thing that makes your Colin comes in, what, 12 seconds faster? Like that's not even worth using as a booster. Like overall, it's pretty big.